Hi everyone and welcome to Math Sucks. This video is going to help you pass the Geometry Common Core Regents. We're doing this one question at a time. Here is part two with question 25. In the diagram below, triangle SUV is similar to triangle TRE. If SU is equal to 5, so I'm just going to fill this in as we go. SU is equal to 5, UV is 7, TR is 14, and TE is 21. Determine and state the length of SV. So we're trying to find this value here. I'm going to call it X. So this question, nice and easy, since these triangles are similar, which they tell us up here, we can make a proportion, this side five, we could see that this side five is going to be in proportion to this side, 14. So we can have five over 14 is equal to, and now we have this side X over 21. So these are the sides that are in relation to each other. So this is 5 over 14 is going to be equal to x over 21. And then we could just cross multiply. And we get x is equal to 7.5. So sv is equal to 7.5. And that's our answer. Question 26. Using a compass and straight edge, construct a line of reflection that maps triangle ABC onto its image triangle DEF. So here we're going to use a compass and straight edge right here. So the first thing we're going to do is um, pick a pair of points that are before the reflection and after the reflection. So I'm going to be focusing on point C and then after the reflection, this point becomes Point F. So I'm going to focus on those two points and I'm just going to open up the compass a little bit, bring it to one point and then swing up, make an arc above and below, above the triangle, below the triangle. And I'm going to keep the same distance of the compass and then bring it to its reflected point. So in this case, it's F and then make an arc again above and below. The triangles so they kind of intersect so you notice it intersects at this point and at this point so we're just going to take our straight edge now and connect these two points and that's our line that's the reflection line and you could see that this looks right if that they're each point is equidistant so C to this line looks equidistant from this line to F if you're looking for more constructions please check out I have a whole playlist on how to do different kinds of constructions like this. So please check that out. Question 27. Triangle MAX has vertices with coordinates negative 5, negative 2, 1, 4, and 4, 1. Determine and state the area of triangle MAX. So first let's draw out this triangle. We have negative 5, 2. So let's see where negative 5, 2 is. 1, 2, 4, 5. And then negative 2, 1, 2. I'm just going to label these. And there's our triangle. So we're trying to find the area of this triangle, right? Um, so there's different ways to do this. Uh, we can measure the distance between points and then add them together. Uh, we could see if this is a right triangle by seeing if the slopes are negative reciprocals of each other and then find the area using area of a triangle. And then there's another way we can do it, which is the way I'm going to show you. So it doesn't mean the other ways are wrong. This is just the way I'm going about it. And this involves first drawing a rectangle around our triangle. So I'm going to just draw a rectangle as the first step. So now that we have our rectangle or in our triangle, let's find the area of the rectangle first. So the area of the rectangle, to find that, we're just gonna need to count the coordinate points going along here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this whole side of this rectangle is nine. And then going this way, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then going down is six. So area of the rectangle is gonna be six times nine, which gives us 54. So this whole thing 
is 54 units squared. So now what we want to do is subtract everything that isn't this triangle in the middle, because that's what we're trying to find. So to do that, notice we have these other triangles that are right triangles, and we can easily find the areas of these and then subtract them. So I'm just going to call them, I'm going to name them different things. I'll call this A, B, and C. So to find the area of triangle A, we're just going to use the formula 1 half base times height. So if we look at this now, we're just focusing on A, so we could see that this has a length of 6. And then just within A, it's just within here, so this the length inside here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is going to be 1 half times 6 times 6, and this will give us 18. Now let's try in the area of triangle B over here. Notice this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So this will be 1 half times 3 times 3, which will give us 9 divided by 2, which will just be uh, 4.5. Now the last triangle, triangle C, let's see. So this whole, this whole side is 9, and then, one, two, and then this side is 3. So we have 1 half times 9 times 3, which will just give us 13.5. So now what we're going to do is take the area of the rectangle, the whole shape, which is 54, and then we're going to subtract all the other triangles we found in here. So we have minus 18 plus 4.5 plus 13.5. And you can plug this in on the calculator and you'll see that we get 18, which is our answer for this question. Question 28. A person observes a kite at an angle of elevation of 32 degrees from a line of sight that begins four feet above the ground as modeled in the diagram below. At the moment of observation, the kite is 70 feet above the ground. Determine and state the horizontal distance x between the person and the point on the ground directly below the kite to the nearest foot. So here, uh, we just want to be careful because because this says 70 feet, notice our triangle within here, uh, this, the space there's a four feet space of the person's eyesight. So, but we're going to be finding this value based on the triangle, um, not based on the ground. So we're going to have to subtract four from 70, which will give us 66 feet. And now I'm just going to, I'm going to take this triangle and redraw it over here. So we have a better picture of it. So we have this angle here, 32 degrees, we have this value 66 feet, and we're trying to find this x value here. So we're going to be using SOHCAHTOA trig functions. And notice with, in reference to this angle, what we have, so we have this value, which is opposite the angle, so the opposite, and we're trying to find the adjacent. So opposite and adjacent, we know we're going to be using tan. So we have tan of 32 degrees is equal to the opposite, 66, over the adjacent x. And then we can just uh, figure this out. So we have x tan of 32 degrees is equal to 66. And uh, at this point, we got to use our calculator. So let's plug this in. And get this value 105.622. And if you look back, they're asking for the value to the nearest foot. So we just want to round. We're going to be rounding up in this case. We get 106 feet as our answer. Question 29. In triangle AGL below, N and E are the midpoints of AG and AL respectively, and E is drawn. So this means that N is the midpoint of AG. So that means this is gonna split this segment in half, and E is the midpoint of AL. So it's gonna split this segment in half, and then this line is drawn. If NE equals 15, GL is three X minus 12. Determine and state the value of X. So what we're gonna be using here is something called the midpoint theorem. When midpoints of two sides of a triangle are connected, a couple of things happen. So first of all, the midpoint and base are parallel. 
So this is parallel to this. And these line segments also have their lengths in a special proportion where the line formed the, by the midpoints is half the length of the parallel side. So basically this is gonna be half of this. So knowing that we can, we can make a little algebraic equation. So we know that 3x minus 12 is gonna be double whatever this is. So it's gonna be two times 15. And then we could just use algebra to solve this. And we get x is equal to 14. Question 30. In the diagram below, triangle TAN, we're looking over here, is the image of triangle sun, S-U-N, after reflection over NZ. Use the properties of rigid motions to explain why triangle TAN is congruent to S-U-N. So the main thing here is that reflection preserves distance. But that means the corresponding sides are all gonna be congruent and the corresponding angles are gonna be congruent. We just have to write a little something about this with the main idea about reflection preserving distance. Question 31. A pyramid with a square base is made of solid glass. The pyramid has a base with a side length of 5.7 centimeters and a height of 7 centimeters. The density of the glass is 2.4 grams per cubic centimeter. Determine and state to the nearest gram the mass of the pyramid. So first let's draw out this pyramid. And notice it said a square base. So with the square base, we know it's gonna be equal on all sides of this base. They give us the side length, which is 5.7 centimeters. And they also give us the height, which is seven centimeters. It gives us the density of the glass and they want us to find the mass of the pyramid. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do here is to find the volume of the pyramid. And when dealing with volume of a square base pyramid, we're just gonna use the formula one third base squared times height. So this will be one third and the base is 5.7 squared times the height, which is seven. Plug that in and we get 75.81. Okay, but we're not done here. They're not asking for the volume. They wanna know the mass of the pyramid and they gave us the density of the glass. So they gave us this here density of the glass is 2.4 grams per cubic centimeter, so centimeter cubed. So don't forget what we're working with was centimeters. So this is centimeters cubed because we multiplied these together. We're going to need to multiply these two numbers together, 75.81, which is the volume, times the density, which is 2.4 grams per centimeter cubed. And I just got this from up here, 2.4 grams per cent cubic centimeter. And what's gonna happen is these are gonna cancel out the centimeters cubed, and then we're just going to end up with grams, which will give us what they were looking for, the mass in grams. So let's multiply this together, and we get 181.944. And it said to the nearest grams, so we're just going to round this up to 182 grams. And that's our answer. So that is the end of part two. Look out for part three coming out soon. Need more practice? Check out mathsucks.org for more questions. Link below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Happy calculating.